And good morning to our viewers in the United States and around the world. I'm Carol Costello. Thank you so much for joining me. We start with breaking news out of Ukraine. In what marks a major escalation in the ongoing crisis, CNN has now learned that Ukraine's military did fire ballistic missiles at rebels. CNN Pentagon correspondent Barbara Starr is live in Washington. CNN military analyst Major General Spider Marks is on the phone. Nick Payton Walsh, our senior international correspondent, will be live for us in Ukraine in just a moment. But Barbara, I want to start with you. You found out this information. Tell us more. Good morning, Carol. Three U.S. officials confirmed to me a short time ago that U.S. intelligence over the last 48 hours has monitored the firing of several short-range ballistic missiles from territory controlled by Ukraine government forces into areas controlled by the pro-Russian separatists. Now, this would be a significant escalation, short-range ballistic missiles. These are missiles that go perhaps 50 miles but have warheads of up to a thousand pounds. We are talking maximum lethality. We are talking uh, a, a, a weapon that can kill dozens of people at a time, potentially when it when it hits. We do not have the exact launch point. We don't have the exact impact point. In fact, the U.S. is holding this information right now fairly tightly. Officials say because they're in an awkward position. These are you know the so-called good guys firing these ballistic missiles. You. Ukraine government forces. No reaction from Kiev yet, no reaction from Moscow. The U.S. isn't, it's not even entirely clear right now that the U.S. is going to ask Kiev to not fire these weapons again uh, because they're saying, you know, that the Ukrainian government has a right to defend itself. But make no mistake, this is a military escalation on this battlefield at a time when everybody uh, outside of Ukraine or Russia at least wants to see it ratchet back. They want to get those observers and inspectors to the crash site of MH17. And it looks now like the fighting is only escalating with now today this additional information that short-range ballistic missiles, 1,000-pound warheads, have been fired. Carol? All right. So, so General Marks, just a short time ago, I spoke to the, to the lead investigator. He said he talked to the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian government. They assured him it would be safe to get to that crash site. And now we hear this. Yeah, quite amazing. Um, but I, I think, frankly, Carol, we shouldn't be too surprised. Certainly, the Ukrainian forces as uh, Barbara rightly pointed out, have a right to defend themselves. The use of these long-range surface-to-surface missiles primarily are used for offensive capabilities. You want to prepare a piece of ground. You want to reduce an enemy's capabilities before you go do something about them. Um, where they were shooting from and what their targets were, um, the United States intelligence community certainly knows. They know the answers to these questions. Um, and, I'm, and I'm certain that these rockets were completely out of harm's way from where the crash site is located and, and how they're trying to work through that situation. But it certainly complicates it. But, again, Kiev has the, has the authority and has the right. The problem, Carol, also is that these are not necessarily very precise weapon systems. Um, so I would hope that they would be using these against targets where Russian separatists, where, where the Ukrainian government felt like they had a right to engage to try to reduce an enemy force as opposed to the collateral damage concerns that we would all have for citizens in that part of Ukraine. Okay, Nick Payton Walsh, we have him now. He's in Donetsk, in the Ukraine, or in Ukraine, rather. So, so Nick, are you hearing anything about this on the ground from where you are? No, it's not something people openly discuss, obviously, an escalation of that kind of weaponry. But it's no secret that both sides have been using very heavy weaponry against uh, each other. The so-called commander of the D Donetsk People's Republic, uh, their militants here, a man called Igor Strelkov, gave a press conference yesterday in which he said that recently uh, the Ukrainian army had been using, uh, he said, even by his uh, estimation, a lot of heavy weaponry. He's used a lot himself when he can lay his hands on it. But we also ourselves heard here last night from this balcony quite late uh, the occasional artillery strike but also three unexplained longer uh, sounding rumbling explosions no idea what they were but it forms part of a broader pattern of increased heavy weaponry being used increased wideness of that use and a real sense i think that a war that started with shooting on roads is now turning into areas being devastated we left a town carol recently which is on the road between donetsk where i'm standing and the crash site through which 
the inspectors have to pass to be able to get to that crash site. Heavy shelling hit it while we were there. We left, along with many other people, in somewhat of a hurry. It's pretty nasty here at the moment, Carol. Yeah, and we keep hearing conflicting reports, Nick. Sometimes we hear that, you know, the funding has died down and the two sides are going to let these crash site investigators safely to get where they're going. And I know we don't know... Um, where these missiles are headed or what their targets are, but it does give you pause. So which is it? Is the fighting intensifying or is it not? Well, the fighting's intensifying, no question about that. The Ukrainian military is pushing as hard as it can to retake the areas around this main city of Donetsk. In fact, some shelling, in fact, hit Donetsk. We don't know who fired it, although separatists claim it was the Ukrainian government. And also, yes, it's so hard to predict when a road, for example, feels safe an hour earlier, it can an hour later become deadly. That's the nature of conflict where people are allowed to pass for a certain periods of time and the fighting picks back up again. We saw that ourselves, Shakhtorsk, that key town, quiet for a little while, and then suddenly absolutely a place you do not want to be. Carol? And, and Barbara, you mentioned a bit about the United States and whether it would say anything about this. Uh, tell us more about that. Well, you know, the the U.S. has been fairly quick to release satellite imagery, of course, that we've all seen over the last several days of what it believes to be uh, Russian military artillery and other weapons firing from the Russian side of the border into Ukraine, showing the damage that it believes those weapons are causing. So I ask the question, will we see the satellite imagery of the Ukrainians firing against the separatists? That may be a very tricky political question. Uh, for the U.S. intelligence community today, because if they have the imagery, then they're sort of in the position of showing the damage that the Ukraine government, which the U.S. supports, uh, is causing. So we'll have to see how this all sorts out. You know, will we only see that satellite imagery from one side in this conflict and not from the other side? And still, you know, we will be re here at CNN, we will be reaching out to both the government in Kiev and the government in Moscow to see what they can tell us about all of this. Right now, what we have are U.S. officials saying they monitored these missile firings, uh, and they say they have the intelligence to prove it. We just haven't seen it. Carol? All right. Barbara Starr, Nick Payton Walsh, General Spider Marks, thanks to all of you. I appreciate it. And also thanks to our international viewers. Yes, so you have been watching CNN USA. Or